Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, The Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life. Are you ready to start living life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Well then, let's get started. Welcome, my friends, to The Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I wanted to share an interesting experience that I had with you. And this is one of the ways that esoteric systems are generally passed on is through the personal experiences with specific practices and the experiences that arise because of engaging in those specific practices over many years or even decades. So please indulge me in sharing this experience. I think you'll find it not only interesting, but also informative and and helpful in your own journey. During a recent trip to Japan, I had an incredible experience. Now, this was an experience that's not all that unusual to me anymore, but what was very interesting about this particular instance is that it was very spontaneous, and this has happened spontaneously before. But what I want to stress here is that this happens as if by some other means than my desire to have this happen. It just suddenly arises. And what I'm referring to here is a sudden shift out of mind into consciousness, where consciousness just grabs and takes control of what it is you are experiencing at the moment. And generally, I've found, because I've had several of these experiences, that there's something very profound that the consciousness is trying to share with you, trying to help you understand in that moment to a much deeper, greater degree than you currently do. This spontaneous consciousness arising usually takes place when you are in the present moment or if you are in a state of no mind. It opens the door for this. And as you begin to live more from a space of no mind and in the present moment, it gives way for things like this to happen more and more. Maybe you yourself have experienced such a thing, and hopefully this will shed a little clarity as to what is happening so you don't think you're going out of your mind or something, right? So my wonderful wife and I were riding on one of Japan's incredible trains. We were in Japan for cherry blossom season to see all of the sakura. And the reason for that was because my wife had stressed to me, and she had been there five times, that she hasn't seen the cherry blossoms. And that was one of those things that she felt she would regret if she was to die suddenly uh, without having seen the, the cherry blossoms in Japan. So this simply had to take place. This is living the fully engaged life, you guys. You you get out and you do all those things. You think about the things. Well, man, I want to do this in my lifetime and I want to do that. I want to experience this. I want to see that. These are the things that I would regret if I was to die tomorrow without having experienced in some way. And then you do that. You You do what it takes to get out there and you experience it. You do it. And this is part of living a fully engaged life. So when my wife expressed that to me, we had plane tickets booked and we were on our way. And we went, we spent a couple weeks walking through some of the most gorgeous areas of Kyoto. And then we traveled into Uji for some incredible high quality green teas and matcha. 
well, enjoying some of the cherry blossoms there as well. So we had this incredible trip. It was just so relaxing and amazing. If you've never been to Kyoto, highly recommend it. The food there, unbelievable. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. So back to the story. We were on this train and we were headed back to the airport in Osaka. I was sitting next to my wife when suddenly my awareness rose at what seemed to be several feet above my head. Now, if you've ever had that happen, what's happening is generally the mind is said to be located in one of the energy body layers in our aura, right? So the mind isn't in our head. It isn't in our body. It's outside of that. And there is, uh, just like there is a, a physical aura, there's an emotional aura, there's a, a mental aura, right? It's one of these layers of aura or etheric field is where the mind tends to reside. And the mind is generally perceived as one of the initial few layers. So consciousness takes you up and out further into these layers of etheric body. And that's where you you get a glimpse of your true size. This is the true nature and size of a human being, not just our physical size, because we have these layers of energy body or multiple energy bodies around us, depending on how you choose to look at it. So I felt my awareness draw me up into to that draw itself up into this higher realm this higher layer and it seems as though you're about 16 to 20 feet tall this is the sensation that you have with this awareness and as this happens you end up perceiving the situation as though you're looking down on it. So imagine this, because this was exactly how it happened, is my conscious awareness was looking down, observing, right? You all know about developing the observer or the witness. So my conscious awareness was looking down on this train car we were sitting in, and I could see myself, I could see my wife, I could see all of the passengers in the train car from above. And it was like one of those movies where the lead character is sitting perfectly still and everyone around him, the entire situation around him is moving at sort of a a fast forward pace. That was how the perception of the experience was coming through for me. You see, when you are in a state of no mind, you're in the present moment, The mind is not there to hinder your pure conscious awareness, and therefore pure conscious awareness is able to take over and provide you with an experience from your true perspective instead of this perspective that we are used to uh, with the mind and the physical senses. So, as this happened, I simply stayed relaxed and went with it. I've found that over the years, if I get too excited or I attempt to focus in on exactly what's happening, my mind would snap back and this would take me out of the connection to consciousness and put me back in a more typical mode of mind. So, I've learned to relax with this sort of thing. And as I was sitting there, all relaxed, I was watching people get on and off of this train car, simply observing from above, because train car has four different doors, and people were getting on and off from all four exits. The interesting thing was that some people got on, and they would keep to themselves entirely, look down at the floor, not look at anybody else, not engage anybody else at all. Others would get on and they would look around and they might smile at some people. Um, And occasionally someone would even say hello. Some of these people would get on and as a way to practice their English, they would say hello to you and, you know, then you would respond. And you know, you've been in Japan a while when Uh, A Japanese person gets on a train and says hello to you in English. 
and you just naturally start to respond with a greeting in Japanese language like uh, ohayou gozaimasu or uh, konnichiwa, depending on what time of the day it is, right? It's, it's really interesting how that happens. So sometimes people would ride this train for just one stop. They get off at the very next stop. Others would ride the train for a few stops. Others still would end up riding the train for several stops before departing. By the time we reached the end of the line, which was the Osaka airport, there were very few people on that train who had been on with us for the entire journey. And indeed, we have not been there with others that got on before us for the entire journey. It was then I realized full well through this consciousness that I had been watching a cycle of life and a lesson in non-attachment. You see, in life, the mind naturally leans towards attachment and resists change. We become very attached to family, friends, pets, and the way we've come to know and be comfortable with our life, and all the things in it. We don't want that to change. We don't like that to change. Think about how devastating it is when a beloved family member or beloved friend passes away, right? It's devastating to us. We grieve substantially for quite a while. We never get over it, right? We wish they could be in our life forever. This is natural. This is what the mind does. This is how the mind clings. But the reality of life experience is that our situation is ever changing. The life experience of a spiritual being enjoying a mental physical adventure generally results in the mind creating a comfort zone. And that comfort zone is destined to bring suffering because everything in the world around us is ever changing. While the ordinary mind clings to the way things are, and the ego clings to the way it wants things to be. So, this idea of attachment, this idea of resistance to change, is a normal state of mind for the mind that is still in an ordinary, unawakened state. And letting go of all of the things that the mind forms attachments to and clings to is part of the spiritual journey. It's in a very, very important, crucial part of your meditative practices on your spiritual journey. As we free ourselves of the mental and egoic shackles of attachment and clinging, We become free to live in the present moment, and it's then that we are able to truly connect with our pure conscious awareness, or more accurately, reconnect to our pure conscious awareness, because that is our true self. Let's look at this example of the train car I was on. Some people got on the train, never looked at us, and got off at the very next stop. In life, we have many casual acquaintances just like this on a daily basis, right? People come into our life for a few brief moments. We have no real contact with them, and then they are gone. Most oftentimes, we'll never see them again. We don't think anything of this because we haven't brought these people into our comfort zone. So even though this is happening to us, hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands of times a day, it doesn't seem to bother us. Why? Because we haven't formed any sort of emotional or mental attachment to these people who just kind of walk by us in a grocery store or stand next to us in line for a bus or whatever it happens to be. So these people are on their own path, they're on their own way, doing their own thing, and our paths just happen to cross for a very, very brief moment in time, and then that's it. That's all the interaction we have. Some people got on that train, and they would smile to us, or they would even speak to us, and then they would get up and exit the train after a few stops. 
In life, we have this type of experience as well with a lot of people. We meet people and interact for just a few brief moments, and then we never see them again, right? This could be someone we talk to in a checkout line. It could be the the waiter, waitress, bartender that we speak to. It could be someone we have an interaction with on the phone. It could be just a person who lives on your street that you never really stop to talk to, yet whenever you're out for a walk... You always smile and wave to each other and say hello, something like that. Maybe even stop and have a a pleasant conversation, very brief conversation. But the relationship never goes beyond that. See, we don't form too much of an attachment to those people either. We enjoy our time with them, but we don't really become emotionally invested in that sort of relationship. I've had this happen where my wife and I, after dinner, were just strolling around an outdoor mall here um, at the edge of uh, the bay. And we'll come upon someone, um, in this particular instance, we came across uh, an older gentleman, very well-dressed older gentleman, who just walked up and started to speak with us. And instantly, I could feel he was open-hearted, I was open-hearted, my wife was open-hearted, and we stood there for about five minutes and we just had a very brief conversation with each other, but the heart connection between us was substantial. It was very deep. And it was the true way we are meant to be connected to one another as human beings instead of being so closed off and superficial. But we know that we'll never see the guy again. He went his way. We went our way. We had a wonderful interaction. There was something a little special there, a little something we were supposed to take away. But that was it. That was the end of it. And we don't seek him out. I'm sure he doesn't seek us out. It was just one of those times where our paths crossed for just a little longer than the previous example I had given. And then we exchanged pleasant goodbyes. He walked his way. We walked our way. And that was the end of it. And even though there was something profound about it, this deep connection is is always a profound experience. Even though that existed, we still did not form any emotional or mental attachments to being around one another. We enjoyed it in the moment for the moment it was, and then we let it go. This is an important point. See, even when these things have a heartfelt connection, these type of experiences with someone doesn't mean that it's meant to last forever. These people touch our lives and we touch theirs equally and that's it. That's all that was meant to be. Now, as I was observing this, other people would get on the train and they rode with us for many stops before they got off. These are like most friends and even some family members, many co-workers, and people like that in our lives. People we spend a significant amount of time with, either by choice or by circumstance. But two, friends come and go, family members come and go, and co-workers find employment elsewhere, or maybe you do. The separation is more difficult to experience with these people because we have developed a, an emotional and mental attachment to them. We've brought them into our comfort zone, and they have become part of that comfort zone. And when that happens, when, when we've created a comfort zone and we bring people into that comfort zone this way, then you have automatically formed an emotional and mental attachment to them in the situation in which you are living. And then when they go their separate ways, you know, maybe sometimes this is uh, an unfortunate uh, breakup or uh, someone becomes angry and, and just doesn't want to be around you anymore. Maybe it's just they're doing something that's best for them, a way of living their life. Maybe it's someone passes away, right? All of these reasons uh, can can arise and will arise for why people leave from your day-to-day life, kind of exit your comfort zone. 
And this causes us suffering, right? It causes us pain and grief and, you know, we, we don't want them to go. Um, we want them to stay around us and we want to remain their friend. We want to remain close to them as a family member. Um, maybe it's even a, a co-worker that we enjoy working with that we want them to stay. Usually it's because we have become comfortable with the relationship and the situation around that relationship. You see, in many cases, it's truly not even the individual that we become so attached to, although we definitely do, but it's more the comfort zone that has been created around the situation, the life situation with that person that we have really formed a bit of an addiction to. And it's in most cases, that which the mind truly clings to and resists any type of change that would occur to that. But the truth of the matter is that there were only a small handful of people who rode the entire way with us that day on the train. So too do very few people remain with us our entire lives. The reason is clear. Everyone has their own path to walk in life. We share a path with people, but eventually, either they or we must step onto a different path in order to live our own unique life adventure. Just as my wife and I had our own destination that day on the train, others too had their own destinations. Everyone had their own stop where they parted ways with us. For some, the stop is the path of starting a family, or moving to a new state, or getting a new job. The options are endless here. But everyone has to get off at their stop in order to walk their own path. Sure, we'd like to have many of them stay with us on the train for the entire ride, but think about how incredibly overcrowded that train car would become. And train cars get crowded enough in Japan where they have people actually shoving you in to pack you in. Imagine if you couldn't even get all of those people in because we have so many experiences with so many people throughout our life. It would just simply not be feasible. The energetic cords of mental and emotional attachment to all of these people alone would drain our life force to the point where we would not be able to sustain our own life anymore. It's just too much. It would be likened to energetically being pulled in 10,000, 20,000, 80,000 different directions all the time. So, as we can see, that's just not sensible. But no one ever accused the human mind of being sensible. <laughs> this is a natural cycle of life, though. People will come into our life and people will go. Some part ways with us on good notes, others on bad notes. Others still through passing away. There are countless ways in which people will come and go into and out of our life. When we accept the non-attachment of this sort of life cycle and we can begin to appreciate each moment with each person for as long as we have them in our life. I think that's part of the point here, right? When you look at it this way, you stop taking people for granted and you hold a sense of appreciation for them every moment because you know maybe they're not going to stay with you forever, but you're damn sure going to enjoy them while they are. And then when they don't, that's okay. You let them go. You let them do what they must do. And you may not realize it, but they have fulfilled their role in your life at this time. Your time together is always mutual. You are providing them with something they need. They're providing you with something you need. And then once that happens then it's time to part ways. Why? Because we have so many people we need to touch in our lifetime. So it's only when we accept the non-attachment of this life cycle that 
friends will come and go, family members will be close and then not so close, or they may go away if they pass away, things like this. When that happens, we can begin to see more clearly and we can alleviate the clinging of the mind and simply learn to enjoy people for as long as we get to have them around. When they step onto a different path, we wish them well and always, always leave the door open for them to come back into our life experience, just as the doors on that train would continue to open at the next stop so they could get right back on if they desired to do so. But it's important to understand that people around us have their own lives to live. Even if it's not the path we would want them to walk or that we feel is right for them, they still have to do what they feel is right for them. They are being guided in their own experience. They have to make their own mistakes. They have to have their own adventure. It may not be right for them, but they need to experience it in order to determine that for themselves and learn the lesson that life is presenting to them. Now, this can prove challenging for us as we begin awakening. And this is where wisdom and compassion must prevail because we must not judge them, but instead allow them to have their experience, wish them well, and leave the door open should they ever choose or need to cross paths with us again. It's difficult, right? If we have a close friend and then over the years we grow apart, Um, perhaps they want to start a family and I'm choosing to live without that. I want to live my life and I want to live it differently. So you naturally go your separate ways. You, You gravitate away from one another. It's natural, and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. doesn't mean one is good, one is bad. It means that you're doing what's right for you. They're doing what's right for them. And instead of judging one another based upon what we feel is best for us, or even if we can see what's best for them and we know that's not it, we still have to let them have that experience. And it's not always easy, but that's because our mind is clinging. We have mental and emotional attachments to them and them as part of our comfort zone. It's the same thing, right, with empty nest syndrome. As children grow up and and leave, they go to college, they move away to start their own lives. That's natural. That's how it's supposed to be. But so often now, parents can't handle that and they cling to their children and they, they pay for all of their stuff as a way to try and keep them in the house because they have no sense of purpose for themselves. They don't know who they are, what they like, or what they're here to do. So they keep themselves distracted by keeping their children at home. But we need to be able to let them go. They have to live their life. Their life is not our life. And well, this sort of thing is sad when, you know, you're waving goodbye to your your 18-year-old son or daughter, and I know, I've done it twice, when you're waving goodbye to them, it's it's difficult, but at the same time, it's also exciting. You got to be able to be excited for them because they're stepping on their own path and they're experiencing their own unique life adventure. Now, If we're extremely fortunate, and I mean extremely fortunate, we might be able to find a very special person to ride that train with and share our life adventure with for the long haul. This is such an amazing gift. This is one of the greatest gifts of our life adventure in the mental, physical realm. It's kind of the point of having a spouse, right? a husband or a wife. It's something everybody seeks. People don't want to go through the life experience alone because we know the adventure is sweeter when you have someone you love to share it with. Someone who will stay with you and be with you that you can love and cherish and enjoy through your life adventure. 
it's incredible when you find someone and you realize that you desire to ride the same train car to the same destination at the same moment in time for the entire ride. This is why the journey is meant to be the focus, not the destination. The journey is the important part. To some, it's just a mundane ride on a train headed for the airport. For others, however, it is an incredible life adventure with a very special person sharing the exact same path at the exact same moment in time for the long haul. How long that is, we don't get to know. And that's why it's important to cherish one another every moment of every day and realize that when the time comes to part ways and it is inevitable that you allow that to happen without attachment. We have to understand that at some point, the long haul even comes to an end. This is why we practice non-attachment. We have to understand that this is normal. There is no resisting it. And this helps us to live in the moment and to cherish those people we have for as long as we have them in every moment that we have them. Especially that one very, very special person in your life. As you engage meditative practices and meditation, the mental and emotional attachments, the sense of clinging, will dissolve away. Doesn't mean that you don't still love these people and don't still enjoy them, but the attachment, the mental attachment and the emotional attachment will dissolve away. To some, this may seem harsh or cold or uncaring. But it's not. It's not at all. Because for our time spent together, it is cherished beyond belief. We enjoy it to the fullest. And this is part of the way of living a fully engaged life. Living outside of a comfort zone. And when you look around and see just how many other circumstances come and go in your life, You'll understand this natural ebb and flow, and you'll realize that it is the most natural and inevitable thing that we encounter in this physical, mental life experience. My wife and I were able to reflect on this in the moment as we observed certain species of cherry blossom trees in Japan. As we looked at them and the wind blew, some of the petals would fall from these flowers and the flower would fall away. We got to enjoy the incredible beauty and fragrance of that cherry blossom for a moment and then it was carried off by the wind and we will never be able to experience that exact cherry blossom again ever but we did get to experience it in that moment And that makes it very, very special. Please make sure to visit www.expansionmastery.com. You can go there now and get a copy of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life, an autographed copy even, for five bucks. Go there now. You can order for five bucks plus shipping. Enter the discount code heaven on earth all the details are there on the website go check it out order your book today make sure you get the appreciation mastery program if you want to truly appreciate life if you want to raise your vibration and live a happier healthier life if you want to be successful in your meditative practices and meditation then i highly recommend you pick up the breath bridge and as always please help us out spread the content that I share, share these podcasts, 
like the Facebook page, the Twitter page, the YouTube channel, all of that stuff. Please share all of this freely. Let's get real spirituality out there instead of New Age fluff. Let's get the real stuff out there, help people to truly start to awaken and enjoy their life experience so that everyone can begin living a fully engaged life. Till next week, my friends, I wish you the very best in your practices and your life. Take care.